Greetings. I am Pastor Brent. And for the second time since we started putting recordings out, I am actually recording from home. We have closed our church because of uh, a number of cases of COVID-19. I'm um, finding out some of them are unrelated, but the fact is there's enough going around that we felt it good to take a two-week pause from meeting in person at the church. This is the first Sunday of Advent, which is a focus on hope. I began thinking about the different things we hope for. Last year, I think about how I hope for things in the Christmas season that totally don't relate to this year at all. This year, I think about March and how we hoped that the lockdown, the shutdown of things would be very 15 days. After 15 days, we figured we'd have a plan and go forward. Obviously, things didn't go well there. The economy tanked, and we all hoped that it would return. We think about uh, treatments and vaccines. We're hoping for those things. This past uh, month, this month, we had a hope for an election. About half the country is happy with the turnout and with the result, and the other half is not. See, we hope for things that are fleeting, particularly this week. I um, actually last week, I became aware of the reality that we probably weren't going to get together with my brothers and sisters over Thanksgiving. I've been talking about this a lot. It was a, it was just a, something I had to give up, and I felt guilty that I wasn't wiser in saying, "Yeah, we should do this." They kind of had dragged me kicking and screaming to say we weren't shouldn't be together, which obviously is the case because not just in the church, but I'm hearing things from family as well about the positive tests of COVID-19. So the hope that we would be able to get together gave up on that. Well, then we had hope uh, beginning of the week that at least our daughters would be coming. And as I started to develop symptoms, they immediately said, we don't think we should come. And that was my concern. Oh, don't, don't, don't stop them from coming. And as I was hoping we could find a way around that, I then became aware that my condition was real and potentially serious. And I began hoping that I didn't infect other people. I began hoping that um, still be able to find a way to celebrate and, and do things together. Um, as the week has gone on, I'll just be honest, I, I'm hoping that my breathing remains strong while my body is fighting off this virus. It's amazing. Hope for an election, hope for finances, hope for getting together with loved ones, hope for breathing. The fact is we hope for many different things, but we need to constantly be drawn back to the things that should bring us the most hope. And that of course is a relationship with our creator God and the savior of the world through the Holy Spirit. Just thinking about that. I'm going to open a word of prayer and we're going to talk a little bit more uh, about this idea of hope. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your care. Each person that just heard me share that has their own concerns that they're hoping for. I pray that you would bless them and help them to realize you know and you care and you love them and you will guide them through everything that, that they need to go through in these days ahead. We thank you for this Christmas season, for the joy of it, but the reality is the first Christmas had a lot of people who were hoping, hoping to be delivered from the, the ravages of the Roman occupation, hoping to be delivered from the silence. Um, God, you hadn't spoken for 400 years, and no prophet had been in the land, and just thinking about uh, angels, and when that first angel appeared, and to, to, to Zebedee, and, and not Zebedee, uh, Zechariah, and, and just knowing that you are beginning to do a work again. Lord, I pray that you bless us as we look into your word, as we consider what it is that we really hope for. I thank you, Father, for the fact that you are the sovereign one of all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those in church last Sunday, and for those or that watched, this is the theme for our Advent. Uh, we, we went through Psalm 107, 
It talked about four different types of people that needed to give thanks. And the, starting with the wanderer, then the prisoner, then the fool, then the driven. And, and I want you to think about that. Each one of those people corresponds to a theme from the Advent wreath. And we're going to be talking about hope for the wanderer today. Christ is born for the wanderer and brings them hope. I'm going to read a number of verses that talk about wandering, and then I'll share some verses regarding hope. In Matthew 8, 19 through 20, a scribe, those are people that were responsible to write out the word of God, a scribe came up and said to him, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. If we're thinking about wandering, we need to remember, first of all, Jesus himself was a wanderer. He didn't have a place to lay his head. Always on the move with a purpose and God, God directed, but he was always on the move. When Nancy and I went to the Holy Land a few years ago, right outside of Capernaum, there was this uh, display and it was something that somebody put together and it looked like a homeless person on a park bench and next to it, it said the homeless Jesus. Now, there's a lot of things to say about that. You might not like that picture, but it, it conveys a point. Um, Jesus was kicked out of Nazareth when they tried to throw him off a cliff because that's where he grew up. And he said, who are you to say you're the prophet? We, we don't believe that. And he left Nazareth and he set up probably his main headquarters in Capernaum was where uh, Simon Peter mother uh, mother-in-law lived and that's where they probably spent a lot of their time would always kind of come back to Capernaum and it's called the town of Jesus and right outside where that sign was uh, was this thinking about that Jesus himself was a wanderer that should encourage us because Jesus understands when we're wandering around not sure What's going to happen next? I'll take you even a little bit further. In Hebrews 11, the great hall of faith, all of the uh, characters that are mentioned and the things that they, were, they had done, at the end of that chapter comes these verses. Talking about a group of people, you can kind of guess who he's thinking about, but the writer of Hebrews said, some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life, hoping in the next life, not in this life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. If Jesus himself was a wanderer, we have to recognize that God's faithful are wanderers. Those who walk in faith with Jesus are also going to be wanderers. That again should encourage us. The fact is people go through difficulties. God pe God's people go through difficulties. We are not called to live a perfect life in this world and just everything going smooth. God allows these things because we're in a spiritual battle and we need to recognize that. We can walk in faith, then faith comes when we especially don't see how things are going to go. So we want it. Then there was another verse from Amos 8 that really got my attention. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. This is an interesting judgment. It's, it's really a, a prophecy of judgment that because you don't listen to me, there's going to come a time when you want to hear from me and you're not going to hear from me. Now, I've been studying this for a while and trying to figure out what exactly is this referring to? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what is this referring to? 
Um, most places immediately go to the tribulation, the day of the Lord. But it's interesting in the tribulation, I find God has prophets, two prophets, 144,000 people going out sharing the word of God. And I think there's a, a place where this would be fulfilled in the tribulation. But I think it's most interesting to me to think about the 400 silent years. After Malachi finished his prophecy, there was no more revelation. And the people were led by the, the Persians, the, the Greeks, and then the Romans. And they wanted a word from the Lord. They wanted to hear many false prophets would pop up, but that wasn't a word from the Lord. So as I think about wandering, we have to remember our hope while wandering is the word. It's the word of God. We need to, to recognize that, that God's word is the thing that's going to help us find hope while we're wandering. And if you think about the 400 silent years, what was going to break that silence? The prediction and the coming of the word made flesh. Our hope while wandering is the word and the word made flesh. Think about that. After those silent years, the word made flesh would come and the word of God would be heard again. After Jesus ascended in heaven, the disciples, the apostles, they gave us the rest of the, of the written word that we have. Think about your hope. Whatever you're hoping for, think, I need to keep turning to the word of God because the word made flesh has provided that for me to find encouragement. But again, if you believe this is a passage that's talking about the end times before Jesus return, think about this. Our hope while wandering is the word, the word made flesh, and his return. That's the most exciting thing to hope for. Jesus is coming again. There's a lot of good songs about wandering, and a lot of them were spirituals, as the people in their difficult life were waiting to cross over Jordan and to, to know that they would be with Jesus. I don't want to cross over Jordan. I would rather be raptured and then the recognition of, of that. So I hope you see that how this, this idea of wandering, we can truly find hope. Now here, just taking those three themes, I want to share just a few more verses as we close. Hope in the word. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. When you're discouraged, when you're struggling, look to his word. That's what I went through on Wednesday as I put out the little devotional from our, our Thanksgiving testimony uh, time. I, I was struggling with all the things I was giving up for Thanksgiving. And I took a simple verse from Psalm 9, Psalm 9, 1 and 2, and just found reasons to thank the Lord. So we put our hope um, in him and his word. And then Isaiah 40, 31, but those who hope, sometimes it says, wait, hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Many, many more verses that would talk about how we can find our hope fulfilled in the word of God. But then Romans 15, 12 through 13, referring to Isaiah. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. Are you thankful for that, Gentiles? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Just a number of thoughts there that it's the root of Jesse, the one promised to, to, to David, uh, the, the David's descendant that would always rule on a, on a throne. Uh, and that, that's going to be fulfilled in the millennial kingdom and then throughout eternity. And the Gentiles will be welcomed in to find hope. And as we believe in the word made flesh, that Jesus came to this earth to die on a cross and rise again from the dead, that when he went to heaven, his greatest passion was fulfilled that he could send his holy spirit to come upon us so that we would have that kind of a close relationship with with god our creator and savior the holy spirit being our sustainer that's where our hope is the word made flesh we find him in salvation and then we walk with the holy spirit in sanctification and we learn to find hope even when life is difficult and then this last verse just love this 
hope in Christ's return and just to recognize. Therefore, prepare your minds for action and be sober-minded. Set your hope fully on the grace that we've brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Christ returns, all of our hopes, the true hopes, will be fulfilled. Are you excited about that? Are you ready to walk through these weeks of the Christmas season, even though we won't be gathering for at least the first two Sundays at church? We pray that that's all it will be. Uh, we pray that things will calm down. We pray for our country and all those things. But, but the reality is we really look toward the hope of being in Christ's presence forever. First Sunday of Advent, shared a little differently than we expected. I hope you take time to watch uh, the, uh, the songs, particularly the, the song, O Come, All You Unfaithful. It's really the theme that kind of got us thinking this way for the Advent theme, that we don't feel faithful, we don't feel joyful and triumphant, but we can still have hope because Christ is born for us. Father, I thank you. I thank you that your message of hope can resonate in our hearts today. I pray that you would indeed bless each one to find whatever it is they're hoping for, to be sober-minded, as that passage from 1 Peter said, to think about what is it that I'm really, really hoping for? Am I being wise? Am I being sober? Or am I just being emotional? Nothing wrong with emotions. We need to bring them to you as well. But I pray that you'll help us each to know you better through this time, even as the first century people hoped for the, for the Messiah who was to come, not even realizing what they were hoping for, not realizing what they were going to get. But now we do, and we know what we hope for in the second coming. And I pray that you'll give us peace throughout Christmas season to, to glorify you and to, encourage, and to encourage one another. Bless us now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I again pray that you'll be safe, and I pray that you'll be blessed.